Hey guys, it's JT Tran, and I have a very special guest, Holly Wolf, a gamer cosplayer and Playboy Playmate. Thank you so much for, for being on the show, Holly. Of course, of course, no, it's uh, my pleasure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I actually knew about you last year. I think it was your, your agent that sent me like a press clipping of some oh. article or interview that you did. She was like, oh, you know, Holly Wolf, FHM, Maxim Model, cosplay. And I was like, okay, <laughs> like, why are you sending me this? It was like so <laughs> random. Um, but I, I didn't put two and two together uh, until like this year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, uh, tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Like, how did you get into cosplay? Okay, um, well, so I went to, back back in the day, when I was a young person, <laughs> uh, I went to school for um, musical theater, so singing, acting, dancing, and stuff like that, and, you know, I always grew up uh, playing video games, obviously, like, I used to watch my grandma play, like, Sonic, uh, like, in our basement and stuff, so I've, and I've always been, like, very into... Like a lot of like pop culture and stuff like that. My parents are huge Trekkies. My and my aunts like Star Wars geeks and stuff like that. And I was always very like in arts in general. Uh, in school, I took some costuming and set design as well as a musical theater portion. And um, was in a dance company for a few years. And from there, I just started modeling. And then, of course, I was t attending lots of like cons in general because I just loved going to them. But it finally, like, kind of clicked one day. I was, like, checking out some other cosplayers and stuff like that. Um, one of them was, of course, like, Jessica Negri. And I did some research. Yeah. Like, good friends now. It's hilarious. But uh, I remember, like, a few years ago, I was just like, wait, pe people do this? <laughs> this is amazing. It's like, it's not like Halloween, right? It's just an excuse to dress up. I was like, well, I already have amazing, like, photographers. And, I, and I'm, I'm decent with costuming. I'm not amazing, but, you know, there's things I can obviously get better at. And uh, I was just like, I have the means to it. Why why am I not integrating this into what I already do um, with, like, my, my Playboy stuff and FHM and whatever? Just all my normal modeling catalog work, all that kind of stuff. So I was just like, this is awesome. This is amazing, you know? So... Yeah, it's basically where the whole cosplay thing stemmed from, for me, in particular. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, because cosplay isn't something that's that's particularly mainstream yet, although it has started becoming more mainstream. It really has. Even Playboy.com now does weekly cosplay feature, yeah. which is absurd. They started doing it um, maybe about half a year ago. They started just slightly here and there. And now they feature like, you know, your hot cosplay girls, like almost just every week. It's another um, means for everyone to get seen, but it's, it's becoming more mainstream. Definitely like even a year to five years ago, it was not even at the... Yeah, yeah. One thing I noticed, it, I mean, it definitely exposes girls or just people in general to a, a certain culture that they wouldn't necessarily be to. Not that cosplay is only just for like anime characters or manga or anything like that. Um, they do cosplay for like Firefly and everything like that, but it, it's yeah. definitely broadening a lot of people's experience, which I find like really fascinating. It is, and, and that's something that I that I really like about it in general. I know some people have like issues like, oh, only featuring like hot, sexy cosplay girls and stuff like that, and sometimes not featuring the people that, you know, have extreme talent as well. But it's also, it's just exposing people that may not have seen it in general because you know, they might just like hot girls, you know, sex sells in any yeah. type of sphere. So it's still bringing more people into it. And, you know, you might not think much of it at first, but then all of a sudden you're like, go full dive into the world of like comics or anime or sci-fi or whatever from seeing some hot girl dressed as something <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's aesthetically pleasing. Whether it's like the model herself is beautiful, or like the costume design is amazing. Now, when you got into cosplay, did that affect you and who you're exposed to, like, or who you you found attractive? Well, okay, so you're talking about them Asian boys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Because you're like a lot of like some of my girlfriends, like I know some homegirls that are just hardcore, love them some Asian. Like some of them are like the fobbier, the better, right? <laughs> Which I find like fascinating because yeah. me growing up, the majority of girls I've ever dated, one, they're all taller than me. And two, they never even thought of dating Asian. So there's sort of this new generation of girls growing up that are exposed to K-pop, exposed to anime, exposed to cosplay. And I'm like, where were these girls when I was Well, I feel like because of the way our social media is and how easy it is to access things across the world, mm -hmm. that have definitely helped exposing more people into other cultures and becoming more accepting of it. Um, for me, it was for me it was K-pop. Yeah. On, um, one of the last white boys I ever dated was like, "Hey, Holly, I think you would really like this." And so, like, we we were on YouTube, and he showed me Girls' Generation, <laughs> and I was like, "This is amazing." And from there, you know, you because I'm a dancer, like, right? I I trained uh, classically in like a bunch of dance, and I was like, "This is like sick." These people, they're very with choreographed and and the cinematography is really awesome and I was like this is this is dope so then from there I started seeing all like you know I found like Big Bang and BTS and all the groups that obviously were associated with K-pop through Girls Generation right because it suggests two things right. and I just kind of like just kept watching so I was like this is amazing this is amazing oh my goodness why well, have I not known about this earlier and um yeah, I just, it's like something, something clicked in my head. I'm just like, this is amazing. I want to know more about all these cultures and white boy stuff. <laughs> hey, you know what I say? Um, once you go Asian, you can't call Caucasian. Once you go yellow, hello. Hello. <laughs> Literally, yeah. And now I just, I don't know. I find, I find Asian boys just extremely attractive. And I don't even look at any other type of boy it's, ter it's terrible, I'm like, <laughs> you know what that's 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 fine you know everybody has their own preference i always you know when i talk to to my asian audience that they need to open their broaden their horizons and be open to dating anybody whether they're white they're black you know they're latina it's very it's very important to not limit yourself because no one else is limiting themselves right exactly i totally agree so yeah and so what was your so what was your what was your first I guess Asian dating experience? So you're you're exposed to this new culture for the first time, and you're like, okay, I want to taste the rainbow, so to speak. Um, who was it? Uh, well, so one of my like main exes, because I dated him for I would say almost three years. Um, first first Asian boy I dated, he was Filipino. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even. Oh. It's terrible. I don't even remember like how we met or how we started getting involved because it was so. It was a long time ago. I'm talking like six, six years ago or so. But um, yeah, I guess after the whole K-pop thing and just looking into it more, I kind of like you know started checking out Asian guys and being like, oh, you're, oh okay, you're kind of cute. <laughs> uh, hi, how's it going? Um, I can't. I can't even remember like how. That stuff kind of happened, but I've been traveling a lot to Asian countries recently. Yeah, especially Philippines and uh, Korea and a bunch of places. And yeah, I just find I just find the culture culture is very intriguing, and I just find them like awesome people in general. So yeah. Mm. Well, one of the, the tragedies of America is like I read the statistic that fifty percent of Americans. Uh, don't have passports. They're not very well traveled. I mean, oh. it just blows my mind, right? Um, like this is why I like going to Europe. I'm like going to London for like Fashion Week, and I like that kind of cosmopolitan vibe. Like these people, they typically speak multiple languages, and they've been well traveled. And if someone that is well traveled and it's open to other cultures, they're gonna be like very open to dating other people. Like you're actually Canadian, right? I live in, I live in Toronto, and Toronto is one of the most multicultural cities in the world mm -hmm. so even growing up I was I was still very um, just open to everything I guess and kind of I already had it 
ingrained yeah. in me a little bit. What you said with Americans, I find that I'm in Vegas right now. I find that so sad that like 50 percent of them don't have passports and aren't traveling because you know there's no like there's no better experience and no better way to gain knowledge of yourself and of the world than like traveling yeah. and experiencing everything you possibly can. If you live in this little bubble in the same place your entire life, I think I. I think it's tragic, actually. Well, I have an interesting story uh, about Toronto and the fact that that's where I had my first client. Like, I had the this this Sex in the City blog, but it was like for Asian men, right? It was like Sex in the City for Asian men, and this Toronto mom, she was Chinese Canadian, was following my blog, and she called me up to help out her son who had been harassed by neo Nazis in Toronto. And so she like she said she was gonna uh, pay for my flight, pay for my hotel, get a car, you know, a driver for the weekend, and pay me. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And I said, um, for three days and three nights, I'm going to be the big brother he never had. But then he was like, I like Canada. I've been to Vancouver, Montreal, and Toronto. Um, but I think sometimes Asian guys we get stuck in this sort of self fulfilling defeatist prophecy. Where they think, hey, this Asian girl doesn't like me, so I'm not going to bother talking to her. Yeah. So it's like I have had some girlfriends. They'll go to an Asian club. And tell me if you've done this. They'll go to an Asian club and, you know, they're hoping an Asian guy will try to talk to them. But the only guys that talk to them are like white guys and black guys that are at the Asian club to pick up Asian chicks, right? Have you ever done that? Like, what's your secret to picking up Asian guys? I feel like Asians do that a lot, probably just because I... I guess they're a little bit more self-conscious about mm -hmm. everything uh, around them and stuff like that. But if I think someone's if I think someone's cute, like I don't wait for them. You're so you're the you're the Always, assertive type. Because I love like Asian boys. Um, oh, I'd never I'd never be like, oh, he's cute. I wonder if he's gonna talk to me. No, no, I'd be like, hey. <laughs> no, I like that. You're a twenty-first. A uh, century empowered woman. I appreciate that. You never know if they're just feeling shy or whatever, or they're like, oh my goodness, like, what if, like, you know, things run through everyone's head about rejection and everything, and some mm -hmm. people can't handle it as well. Um, and But rejection happens to everyone, obviously. Yeah. But uh, it can stop some people from making decisions that they should make. So yeah. I have no problem being rejected, you know. If someone says, oh, sorry, no. Like, I'm, I'm taken, or I don't think you're cute, or whatever. I'll be like, okay, oh, that's fine. Like, thanks, thanks for the honesty. Have a great night. Like, go party. Yeah. Uh, but some people like that, so. Well, I always tell my, my, my guys that rejection is a gift. It's a gift of honesty, sincerity, but most importantly, time. Right, because you want to be rejected, because that way you're not wasting your time, and you can move on to someone that you, you actually want to meet. That's very true. You don't want someone just being nice to you for the sake of, you know, just being nice and not really, you know, hurting your feelings. And that's a big waste of time. Right, so, right. No. Mm -hmm. so another thing I'll get from guys is like, JT, where are all these beautiful white girls like yourself that are into Asian guys? Introduce me. Like I'm sort of a matchmaker, right? But here's the thing. And I, I hear this from my homegirls who like Asian guys or who have a fetish for Asian guys. Being Asian is just not enough, right? The guy has to have more than that. I mean, that just sort of like, if she's into Asian guys, you know, she'll look at you, but that's not enough to, to actually get her number, ask her out. Like, what is, you know, what's your standard for an Asian guy? Um, well, I just guess, like, you, you've got to be, like, you obviously have to have things in common. You have to have things to talk about. And, and something that helps you, like, strike up a, a good... Uh, like legit conversation right away and yeah like um, obviously I'm I, I'm very I like genuine people right. and I like people who are genuine and who aren't afraid to just kind of like like be open and talk about things I hate cocky people you know I think that's what a lot of the times like other races turn me off so fast because they these guys I find like they're too aggressive. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times like guys will like grab my arm in a club. 
mm-hmm. be like, hey, baby. And I'm just like, oh, no, no. Like, first of all, why are you touching me? Why are you using my space? Did not allow you to, like, grab me and try to pull me into you. And they just act all, like, tough and it's such a turnoff. But uh, I, I, I don't know. Like, someone who's just easy to talk to, honestly. If you can't talk to the, a person you're dating, like, just casually and whatever and, like, totally cool with them, like, there's no point in ever being with them down the road. Other than that, I don't know. It's got to be good looking. Sexual attraction is obviously a big right. start to relationships, right? And we see first. So that helps. I don't know. Yeah. For my guys, because I deal with guys that are both Asian American and Asian fobs, yeah. right? The, the one thing interesting that I found, and, and, you know, you tell me if you've experienced this, uh, an Asian American guy, and I've had this multiple times, where they're like six foot tall, they're good looking, they're well dressed, they're successful. But mentally, I call it the, the ugly duckling syndrome, where they feel that these girls that are like hitting on him, I'm like, dude, they're all over you. It's like, really? No, they're not. Right? There's this sort of internal security. While an Asian fob, like growing up in China or Tokyo, he's like the apex male in his society. So when he comes over here, he doesn't, he's never been called like a racist name in his entire life. So. <laughs> Like, I need to clean him up, give him a new hairstyle, maybe clothes, and, you know, maybe fix his teeth. But his self-confidence is a lot higher, I find, with Asian Americans, which is, like, so fascinating to me. Right? Have you ever experienced that? I have. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. Um, There's this one guy from who I met in Vegas who's from Hong Kong, and um, he was, like, everywhere in the EDC like booths with the owners and everything I'm like and then we were at XS and he's still there like after EDC weekend I'm like who is who is this guy plus he was extremely tall so <laughs> you can see him everywhere you know I just kept spotting him so finally like we talked because I'm just like who are you person like why are you within the same crowd as me all the time and um found out he was from Hong Kong he owned a few like restaurants there whatever but yeah his confidence level was like nothing I've ever seen before in an Asian guy. Like right. just, I would, I would literally tell him that I thought he was like good looking. He'd be like, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry <laughs> for <laughs> trying to compliment you. So I've, I've experienced that firsthand now. And it's, a, it's, it's weird to see because I'm normally, I'm used to the more meeker, mm-hmm. meeker ones. Um, but yeah, I've noticed that the ones in, from Asia who are there and live there and growing up there. Yeah, because they, in, in society over there, they're extremely good looking, you yeah. know? So I remember uh, one one city in a club, uh, these girls came up to like my girl later on, because I was with a bunch of like my, my Asian uh, guys and clientele. And they're like, my God, these are like the friendliest Asians I've ever met. Because <laughs> <laughs> they've never experienced that. Um, because I did this thing, I mean, I, I spoke, you know, I, I said this, was it like Harvard or Yale when I was teaching there? And I, I did this sort of like impromptu or informal study uh, uh, where I, I talked to like hundreds of girls and I was asked, like, what's the number one stereotype that you have of Asian men? And I'm just asking an audience and like, obviously the small penis stereotype comes up, right? But here's the thing, like, that's a stereotype that other guys bring up. Other guys bring that up constantly. Like girls, sometimes they do, but it's not like the number one. Um, you know what I find, and you tell me if this is something that you unconsciously uh, pick up, is the number one stereotype girls tell me about Asian guys is Asian guys date and only hang out with Asian girls. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty, pretty accurate. Uh, most likely because um, it might be you know family stuff. Maybe, you know, their, their parents are much more traditional and they want them to, you know, date someone within their race and keep it that way. Um, I've had that happen to me, a few guys, you know, that I would hang out with and stuff. Um, as soon as they got like an Asian girlfriend, like I was, even, I was like completely cut out of the picture, even though we were friends. I was like, what, why? And they're like, oh no, I'm not single anymore. I'm dating this Asian girl. And like, we're going to get married in six months. Goodbye. Okay, <laughs> oh, 
Yeah. yeah. So I've, I have noticed that, that, yeah, I mean, it happens with every culture in general, but it is very noticeable uh, with Asian guys. They definitely stick to Asian girls, and it might be just because they think that's all they can get, which is not a bad thing. I mean, obviously, like, not bashing Asian girls and that they're like the lowest right. of food chain of women or anything because they're not, obviously. Um, but it is, yeah, it is a big thing that I've seen all the time. And yeah, the whole dick thing is definitely a guy thing. Yeah. Just don't ask about that anytime. Guy, that's guys. That's themselves comparing <laughs> penises with other people. We don't do that. Girls don't do that. We talk about boob more than we talk about dicks. So. <laughs> talk about other girls' boobs. And, and women's bodies on Instagram, and I would ever talk about guys. No. I'm, li- I'm just staring at boobs all day. Yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but definitely, you know, with, with my guys, it, it's very important to to show that you socialize and are friends with people of other races because that's how you you defeat stereotypes and racism is showing that you can intimately, like, emotionally connect and be with other people, whether it's through friendships or, or romance. I mean, yeah. if you if you we just stick inside of a group. We're just kind of reinforcing that stereotype. Well, that's the thing, you know. It, it, you know, stereotypes are there because there can be some truth to them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's never a general rule for anything, but just generally, stereotypes are in pl- have become uh, apparent because of what has happened, like in history and stuff like that. I guess. But uh, yeah, I friends with all races. <laughs> <laughs> So am I, so am I. Um, kind of moving on, who would you say is your favorite Asian male celebrity or someone that's like on your 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 bucket list? Oh, um, Rain, G Jug. Yeah, the entire crew from Big Bang. <laughs> entire crew, one at a time or all together? G. <laughs> 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 Are there things that you want to address? Like, you have any kind of events that you want to promote, like we can get into, or like your career? Not really. I mean, I'm just figuring out my year this year. Basically, planning as much as I'm as I'm doing. I have several cons that I'm going to make sure I go to this year again. Of course, the big ones: San Diego Comic Con, New York Comic Con, Anime Expo, Fan Expo, Dragon Con. Uh, and then within that, I'm going back to Philippines, um, hopefully the end of February. So I shot a lot of content for a few magazines, including Playboy and FHM over there. Cool. So depending on when content gets released, I'm going to go back with a few of my friends who also shot and uh, do some parties and events and uh, stuff. As well as most likely, I would like to go to a few other areas have you ever been to tokyo not oh i was there teaching like last december or december before last and it was so charming it's a very different country it's very um but it was like really charming i liked it a lot more than i thought it i would but it's it is very different you there's a certain amount of culture shock I like that though. I like culture shock, so I want to go there, and I def- I want to go to Hong Kong as well, mm. and um, and and Thailand as well. I would love to go to Thailand. So I've been to yeah. I need to go to more countries. Um, we'll see. We'll see what else. Europe, I I like, but honestly, Asia as a whole is my most favorite. <laughs> I'm like the the reverse. I I love going to Europe. Like, I have a thing for, like, I love the Hollywood type uh, of girls, L.A., stuff like that. But then there, there's a difference in the sex appeal when it comes yeah. to, like, L.A. American girls versus uh, European or London girls. Like, yeah. L.A., it's about, like, like skin and cleavage and, and you know, and I love that. I think, you know, every red, you know, blooded American. Uh, but in Europe and London, th- there's a higher standard of fashion and sort of a sophisticated look. I can just tell by looking at their style if they're like European. I remember the first time I went to France. Um, I went to the, the Cannes Film Festival. 
and but and I was there with a, a few girls from like Miami and around America, right. and then we were all a bunch of girls from like Europe and France and wherever. Um, and oh my goodness, it was like the styles were just yeah. In day, I was and I was kind of like in the middle, like just looking, and I was like, wow, this is just this is the weirdest thing. <laughs> like I've got a thing for like that Kate Middleton look. Very fresh face, um, very high class fashion, gorgeous looking outfits, you know, barely any makeup on, you know, hair sleek back. It's very like that's very Europe ish as opposed to like our side. It's just the complete opposite, really. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's the thing for me. I mean I remember as an Asian guy, you know, growing up in America, I had to deal with insecurities. And like, slowly over time, I was just working at it. Um, I was lucky in the fact that my first girlfriend was like a five foot nine blonde, blue eyed girl. And she chose me. Like, I was 20 before I kissed my first girl. And like, she chose me. And I was so lucky because I was in an engineering college and I spent, studied aerospace engineering. Like, literally, I'm a rocket scientist or a former rocket scientist. And, you know, it was just um, just mind blowing. Right. Um, but then moving to California and trying to get into dating and socializing, it was like really difficult until I went to Europe and it just blew my mind. Like there are these girls that were completely open to me. Like in France, I didn't realize I France was the first time I actually ran in girls that had an Asian fetish. Like okay. they specifically had an Asian fetish. I think it was because France at one time colonized Vietnam. And then Vietnam won that war against France. So there's a lot more like kind of sort of respect. So I actually encountered girls that were like into like specifically Vietnamese guys. I was like, wow, this is, this feels different. Like I am yeah. desired and sought after. Yeah, that's fantastic. No, that's good. So um, going back in, into the dating question, uh, how would a guy, you know, let's, let's, put this, let's, let's take this in two categories. Like how would a guy, let's say, you're looking for a one night stand. Like hypothetically, you are not that you are, but like hypothetically, what would a guy have to to, to do uh, in order to get with you? Um. Well, I mean, you'd have to be pretty good looking. Right. Pretty good, like. So, so working out. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, good fashion. No, just honestly, just nice in general. I don't, and not, um. If it's a one night stand, obviously I don't want them like getting attached to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, that has happened to me uh, once or twice, where you know you hook up with someone and you think they're great, you think they're fabulous, but it's like, thanks, but this is all. This I'm was doing. all it was, it was for. All right. I'm just, you know. That is one thing that's a positive and a negative about Asian guys, and the fact that with Asians. Sex is considered a lot more serious. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it, it's something obviously not to take lightly at all, because you do you do become more connected with that person on a level that you normally wouldn't. So I don't like throwing it around like a crazy person, mm -hmm. um, you know. Um, so I am still very picky about uh, if I were to do that, like who it would be with. I want like a a mentally sound person who's very respectful and nice and just has their not like, someone who's like thirsty right? yeah i the last and the last thing you want is someone who's like you know just so thirsty and so excited that you're getting with them that they're like you know blasting you all over the social media or like you know just freaking out and telling one of the, like their friends and that kind of stuff that would definitely be like yeah i i had this this client he's um chinese mormon right and so he was dating this girl but it was only like a couple months and at one point like he starts holding hands with her and then in Asian culture, it's kind of a bigger deal. So he goes on Facebook and he puts relationship status with her. And then all of a sudden, her like dad and brother are calling her. It's like, you're in a relationship? When did this happen? I'm what? like, dude, it's just it's holding hands, not quite there, you know? Talk to the girl about that, too. You can't just be like, oh. <laughs> what if she's like, wait, no, no, that's, we're not quite there yet. Yeah. Let's hold out. 
posting about that kind of stuff, especially because social media is so instant now and people see everything. And it's very like, yeah, talk to a person before you decide that you're both in a relationship because they might not think you are. That's funny. I, I, I grew up Mormon too, so. Oh. Yeah. Well, then he's like, he's like Chinese and Mormon and he's like double like conservative culture. It was like really fascinating talking to him and just, you know, because he wants to date and fall in love, obviously, but it was just like it, you know, un unraveling that and trying to show him like the American way of dating, but also just you need to be a little bit more sexually confident. There's a lot of more nuance to sex than, you know, you kiss and then you're in love oh, or something like that, right? <laughs> Um, so what about a relationship? Let's say a guy, you're interested in a guy, you know, whether it's at a coffee shop or at a club, and you're looking for someone serious. Like, how does a guy going about, like, dating Holly Wolf, Playboy Playmate, celebrity cosplayer, how does he become your, your, your primary, your, your primary boyfriend, your, your monogamous boyfriend, or more than that? Um... I don't know, I guess just uh, over time, how we, we get along and stuff, and if we like each other, you know, on a level, we start talking more, like, and hanging out lots, obviously, like, I want to just get to know someone for who they are as a person, mm -hmm. and I don't like guys to try to, like, um, like I said, be super cocky, I don't like guys who want to try to, like, spoil me or anything like that, I want someone who's very genuine and nice and respectful. And who's just like who's someone I can like literally just hang out with, because that's what like your significant other should should be someone who's very real with you and very honest as well and very supportive. Um, what I do can be really hard for some people um, with the amount of traveling, right? Uh, the amount of you attention know, that you get, attention and and you know I'm naked on the internet, so all of those things play a big factor. It requires a very secure person. It does. It really does. So how they react and how they handle things gives me a very good sense of how or if, if a relationship would work. Um, but I mean, yeah, I'm, when it comes to me as a person instead of me as a model, like I'm pretty, pretty chill. So I also want someone who's just very awesome and chill. So. <laughs> Can like stay home and knit socks with you? Well, maybe not knit socks, but like we'll watch anime. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, what's your what's your favorite anime, <gasps> or one of your favorites? Um, okay. Um, kind of like strike me as like a fairy tale girl. Or... Yeah. Well, I like Fate, like Fate Zero, Fate Stay uh -huh. Night, uh, Sword Out Online. I, I adore. I love. I love the whole story going on there. Maki is great. Like. Um, Call me got killed. I just finished. I thought it was fantastic. Attack on Titan. Stuff like that. Oh, very cool. Um, yeah. But we're going back really quickly, have you ever heard? This is something that I, I I will talk to girls that I'm like dating or, or seeing, and they've never been with an Asian guy. It's like, you know, like scientifically, did you know that half Asian babies, half us, are like the most gorgeous in the world? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like I'm just like planning that idea in there like you know if you and I were ever to get married like our kids like they would be smart and beautiful and I'm sure they'd get something from you too well yeah that's the thing like mixed it like interracial kids are just stunning they really are so I and, and I have some friends that are like uh, you know half Chinese half French Canadian or whatever and, and they're just yeah they're like the most Beautiful people. So, yeah. Asian mixed with anything like white or European. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so, uh, what final bit of advice would you give our audience that want to date, like, you know, a quality but beautiful girl outside of his race? Um, don't, like, don't rush, you know. Don't get, get, um negative if it doesn't happen right away um go out meet people like you know the more you're around people the more potential you could have a really meaningful relationship with and you know if rejection happens don't don't let it get you down just realize that person's not for you and move on you'll eventually be able to find someone like awesome and just be 
be yourself. Like you're gonna be with that person. You have you can't be like changing who you are because that won't create a lasting relationship at all. So right. just that kind of stuff, I guess. <laughs> Very, very cool. And how can our audience find more about you, Holly? Um, well, all my social media, most of it, is uh, so Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. It's Holly T. Wolf. Facebook, same, Holly Wolf. And, uh, yeah, that's about it, really. Okay. YouTube, same, Holly Wolf. But you Google my name, it's, it's all there. It's all there. All right. You can also check it out in the, uh, the YouTube description where I post links. All right. Thanks, Holly, and goodbye, guys. Thank you. <laughs> hey there. Thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it. And make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news, too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right. We've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check back for that every Monday. Oh, and if that's not enough for you, remember that for the last 10 years, the ABCs of Attraction have been the finishing school for Asian gentlemen. So we've been teaching guys how to be better boyfriends, more confident, and better husbands. If you need that extra push, you can enroll in one of our classes. But until then, we'll see you every Monday. Bye.